many of you here tonight. I was hoping to have a microphone. I don't, so I do hope that you will be able to hear me. Do you know the story behind, behind Lucia? That's good, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so the celebration of Saint Lucia is dedicated to the Italian Saint Lucia of Syracuse and it's held on the 13th of December each year. And as you probably know by now, December in Sweden is a very dark and very cold period. So we need the light. Before the reform of the Gregorian calendar in the 16th century, Santa Lucia's day was the darkest day of the year. In Scandinavia, this was also the date earlier, celebrated by the heathen population that was afraid of Lucifer, the devil himself, which still today somewhat lives through the tra tradition of Lucivaca. Have you heard about Lucivaca? Some? Some? Uh, that's when we stay away all night between the 12th and 13th of December and when the light arrives again in the morning you are safe again and you don't need to fear Lucifer. This is still carried out today mostly by the younger people having great parties so most of them are quite tired today. The legend of Lucia tells that Lucia who was a Christian woman living in Italy between 283 and 304 was a very beautiful woman with extraordinary beautiful eyes. The young virgin wanted to devote herself and her life to God, but a pagan man admired her and wanted to marry her. But instead, Lucia took out her eyes and gave them to her admirer. When God saw this, he was impressed and he gave her new eyes, even more beautiful. Lucia then gave her dowry to the poor and her fiancé denounced her for this. She was sent to death by burning. However, the flames didn't touch her, so instead she was stabbed in the heart and died at the age of 21. The red ribbon that she wears around her waist represents the wound from the sword. The first recorded appearance of Lucia dressed in white in Sweden was in the county house in 1764. The custom did not get really popular until in Sweden until the 20th century though, when schools and local associations began to promoting it. Stockholm presented the first Lucia in 1927. The tradition that she serves coffee and buns, Lucekater, as I hope you have enjoyed tonight, dates back to the 1880s, although the buns were around long before that. <coughs> now, competition for the role of Lucia can be tough. Each year, Sweden's national Lucia is proclaimed on television while every town and village has its own Lucia. The candidates are presented in the local papers, as you might have read, and we all get to vote for the one we think should be Lucia. We have Wandi Kostruna, Karlo, Nolibi, Service Boyd, and Olaf Stern. However, in school and daycare, cent uh, and, 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 you know, daycare center for younger children, all the small kids get to be whoever they want to be. They could be uh, Lucia, Star Boys, or Lucia's handmaidens. And I have seen uh, Lucia, 25 of them in a row, very happy. In the old days, at least when I was younger, pretty girls and preferably with long blonde hair <laughs> had the best opportunities of getting elected. Now that is not enough. We are also looking for other qualities, like especially the singing quality, something that you will hear tonight. Uh, the winner is announced and driven around town, preferably in a horse-drawn vehicle of some kind to spread the light and song in food stores, factories, old age homes, medical centers, and places like BTH. <coughs> so when Lucia arrives in the morning, which was the usual tradition, uh, she usually brings uh, ginger snaps, heppa kakur, and sweet saffron flavored buns, lusikatter, shaped like a curl-up cat with 
with raisin ice. So that's what you've been eating tonight, so you know. So today, after Lucia, if you not already have, you will be able to buy that. And tonight's Lucia and her handmaids are from Coscruna. And we are very happy to have them here. And we do hope that you will enjoy them in a few minutes. Thank you.